Now, one of the more common questions I see on social media from complete beginners looking to learn to code is, should I buy a new computer? What kind of computer do I need to learn to code? And today I'm gonna to assume that you know nothing and I'm going to give an overview of the different types of computer parts, the different options you have for computers and how they apply to learning to code and give you recommendations in a variety of price ranges. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. Now, ultimately your choice of computer is going to be heavily influenced by what type of programming you want to do. And we'll get into that. But let's start with the basics. Let's talk about the types of computer components and what they do and how that impacts your code. Now, the first thing is the CPU. That is the central processing unit. This is the brain of your computer. And there are a couple terms that you're gonna see around CPUs. You're gonna see something in terms of gigahertz and that's your clock speed. In general, higher gigahertz means faster processing. You're also going to see something called threads. And threads are how computers multitask. So the more threads you have, the more your computer can seemingly do at once. And the more applications you can have open, the more processing you can do effectively. And when it comes to things like encoding video or things like that, you can generally go faster with more threads. And where I come down on recommending processors for developers is really unless you want to do game development or you're going to do video encoding or crunching large amounts of data in like data science where the threading is going to make a difference. Any modern processor released in the last couple years that isn't the bottom tier processor is going to be just fine. And if you are in one of those specialized areas, then you're going to want something with more threads, probably like an AMD Ryzen 7 or an Intel 7 series. They tend to number the chips like three, five, seven, nine, based on how many threads and how powerful they are. The fives are your general purpose. That's where if you have the budget, just get a five series, you're gonna be fine. Go into seven or nine if you're in one of those specialized areas. Now the next component you're going to look at is your RAM, random access memory. Now the RAM is kind of the short term or working memory of your computer. When you launch applications, they are loaded into RAM and that's where all that data executes. So if you've ever had a computer and you open a lot of different applications and it just starts to slow down and bog down, that's usually indicative of a RAM issue. You just don't have enough. And RAM is something when you're specking out a computer to learn to code. If you have extra budget, I generally recommend you put it into RAM first because the more working memory you have, the more interesting stuff you can do. And in modern software development, there are things like virtual machines and containers, which I'm not going to get into in detail, but basically think about it as running a mini computer inside your computer. So having multiple computers running at the same time on one set of hardware. And these things are very hungry for RAM. So if you're gonna get into modern professional development and use Docker containers or things like that, having more RAM is really going to help you out. And that is the first place where I spend extra money on my builds. Now, as far as recommendations for RAM, if you can afford it, you really shouldn't get less than 16 gigabytes of RAM these days. A lot of lower end PCs and laptops, they'll try to sneak in eight gigabytes of RAM. It'll work. You'll be okay if you're doing basic coding, but if you do anything more than the basics, if you get into any sort of data science or video editing or video game development, you are going to be very disappointed with eight gig of RAM. So I recommend starting with 16. If you can afford it, get more, get 32. I actually have 64 in my machines because I do video editing and I am a gamer and I do a lot of pretty heavy stuff. So 64 is where I feel good. I actually had 32 and I recently upgraded because HD video and my files are getting bigger and I'm doing machine learning and all sorts of interesting things. The RAM is really helping out. So again, if you have the budget, RAM is where you want to put your money first. 
So next, let's talk about hard drives. And there's basically three types of consumer hard drives that you're gonna come across. The first is a standard magnetic tape hard drive. These are usually larger, they're not very expensive, but they're very slow. Next, we have the SSD or solid state drive. This is not magnetic tape, it's actually physical chips, so it's much faster than a magnetic tape drive. And this is your standard drive, you're gonna see this in most builds. But there is a newer type of solid state drive called an M.2 drive. This is almost like a stick of RAM and it plugs directly into your motherboard and it is blazing fast. Now, which one do you need for programming? Honestly, this one doesn't matter as much. Now, SSDs are typically what I recommend because they're middle of the road, they're very budget conscious, but if you have the money, the M.2 drives are really good. And you're only really gonna notice the difference when you're loading or saving large projects or you're working with large amounts of data. So if you're going into something like data science or data engineering and you're gonna be playing with large files and loading and saving things to the disk frequently or working with databases on your local machine, then faster is generally better. If you're just working on standard applications like web apps or things like that, it matters less and SSD is going to be fine if you have limited budget. I would rather put the extra budget into RAM than I would going from an SSD to an M.2 drive. And as far as the size of the drives and other recommendations, drives are so big now. I mean, one terabyte, two terabyte, four terabyte. I mean, the drives are just huge. You can get away with a one terabyte drive for most things, unless you're a heavy gamer or into video. Otherwise, the one recommendation I might make is to get two drives because you can definitely notice a performance difference if you use one drive to store your tools and a second drive to store your data, because then you can get IO from both places at the same time, and that can provide slight increases in performance. So usually what I do in my builds is I have one system drive that's a little bit smaller, and then I have one data drive, which is larger. So I'll do like a one terabyte system drive and a two or four terabyte secondary drive that holds all my data. But again, I'm into video stuff and I'm into video games and I do a lot of data related things. So that second bigger drive makes a big difference to me. Again, if you're just doing standard coding, you're learning backend development or you're learning web development, you don't need two drives at all. You'll be just fine with one. Now, the last component we want to talk about is your graphics. And there's basically two different ways that graphics are handled by desktop and laptop computers. The first way is integrated graphics. Now, this means that the graphics processor is integrated into the motherboard and it's handled by your computer processor. It is not a separate component. Now these are fine. If you're just doing basic development like web development or backend development, you will have no graphical challenges. This is not something you need to be concerned about. It will run your IDE. It will run your productivity software like Word or Google Docs. You'll be just fine. The minute that you step into gaming or you step into video editing, or you step into advanced machine learning or AI, now you want a video card. You want a dedicated component that plugs into your motherboard. And this is where it gets crazy because these video cards, they can be anywhere from $100 to over $2,000. And I can tell you my most recent build, my desktop build, I spent more on the video card than I did on the rest of the components. So it can get really crazy. But again, I'm into gaming, I do video editing, I do ML and AI experiments on my computer, and I need that extra processing power to speed me up, make me more productive. So I was willing to spend that kind of money. If you are in those spaces, you're gonna spend that kind of money too if you wanna have a good productive experience. If you're not sure and you just want to dabble then I would suggest just starting with a basic mid-range video card. 
you know, any retail worker can kind of recommend one to you, but you're probably going to pay somewhere between $200 and $450 for one of these video cards. And it'll be general purpose and it will let you get started. And then if you get serious about these kind of things and you get tired of waiting for the processing and the encoding, you can look at upgrading later because video cards are very easy to swap in and out, especially in desktop builds. So other than those physical components, what are some other devices you might want to consider for your coding build? The main one when you have extra budget is dual monitors or an ultra wide monitor if you have the budget for that. The reason is when you're writing professional code, when you're getting into real projects beyond the toy applications that you start with as a beginner, you are going to want to have multiple windows open. And in general, I have three. I have my IDE where I'm writing my code. I have a browser so that I can look things up quickly. And then I have a second browser or a Word or some kind of productivity software where I have my specifications, my outlines, and my diagrams that are helping me write the code in the IDE. And having all those three things open and being able to work on them simultaneously reduces the effort of context switching and it really lowers the amount of your memory, your human memory, that is necessary because switching windows and flipping back and forth is really unproductive and it makes it really hard to stay focused on the task at hand. So having more monitor space is huge for programming productivity. I cannot recommend it enough. Even for starting learners, if you can swing it, get a second monitor, you will not regret it. Now let's talk about operating systems or OS. And basically you have three choices here. You have Linux, you have Mac OS, and you have Windows. Now I'm gonna assume if you're a Linux user, you're probably not even watching this video because you already understand computer components. Linux is a very powerful and very lightweight operating system, but the learning curve is steep. You have to learn a lot about computers and networking and components and configuration of computers to use Linux effectively. Now that being said, it's very good for you. If you're willing to spend the time to learn Linux, go for it. You will learn some things that the other operating systems won't teach you and you will be better for it as a general technology practitioner. That being said, as a beginner, you probably don't have the patience for that. You don't wanna spend your time configuring things and figuring out why these drivers don't work. You want to spend your time writing code. And that's why Windows is probably the best choice for a new developer. And this is because the corporate environments, where the jobs are in the enterprises, the vast majority of machines and computers you are going to be assigned at work are going to use Windows. So you might as well get used to it. You can always switch to one of those operating systems later. It's going to give you a very smooth install and configuration experience. Now on the Mac OS, Mac is legendary for being easy to use, their components are beautiful, well presented, and things generally just work on Mac. The biggest strikes against using Mac OS is that number one, like I said, in the corporate environments, you're less likely to come across Mac being your hardware of choice. And number two, their hardware tends to be significantly more expensive. So if you're on a budget, you're gonna get more power on a Windows or Linux machine for your dollar than you are on a Mac OS. Otherwise, at the end of the day, if you're willing to learn the operating system, you can learn to write code in any OS. There's just upsides and downsides to each of them. I recommend Windows for beginners who aren't particularly strong or experienced in networking or computer configuration. Now, the last question buyers usually have early on is should I buy a laptop or a desktop? So let me break this down for you. We'll start with laptops. Laptops are generally more expensive. You will get less power for your dollar. They are also less upgradable. In a desktop, you can very easily swap out components. If you want to add more RAM, you can just open the case and add more RAM. 
Some laptops let you do that, some of them don't. Some of them make some pretty weird choices for the types of RAM and just make things difficult to upgrade. In a desktop, you can upgrade almost anything you want. So if you're on a budget and you need to build something with lower power that you want to upgrade to higher power later, then you should definitely choose a desktop. Now laptops, they have that portability. So if you're a student on the go, or you wanna take your laptop with you to work or to the cafes or places like that, you don't have a lot of space at home for a big desktop system, then a laptop is definitely for you. But be aware of the upgradability issue. Also be aware that laptops tend to overheat when you throw major tasks at them. So if you are looking at doing those video editing things or video games or AI, you can really work your laptop and it can get hot and that heat can damage the components. So the more you're trending towards being a power user, the less a laptop makes sense. Now, I hope that this video was effective in identifying the components and the different considerations that you might have when choosing your first coding PC. Now, again, if you're on a budget, don't worry about it too much. Do what you can, maximize the RAM. Your low-end coding PCs, you can get them for as low as 350 to 600 US dollars. That's a pretty standard range for something that will get you started in web development or basic backend development. You'll have no problem with that. I do not recommend a Chromebook. Even though you can do some online tutorials and stuff, part of being a professional software developer is installing your tools locally and configuring your environment, and that's not a step that you should skip. So even though you can do Chromebook and go to Code Academy or something, that's not something I recommend if you're serious about becoming a professional developer. The next tier up in that mid-range when you add a dedicated graphics card and things like that, or you're going with a laptop, you're usually gonna run in the 600 to 1500 US dollar range. At the high end of that range, you're getting into a really nice machine that's gonna do other things like gaming and maybe some light video editing. Now, my on-the-go uh, laptop that I use is a Surface Pro with 16 gig of RAM. It's lightweight. It works with just my IDEs and browsing and my basic coding tasks. It's something if I'm going to a coffee shop or something, I can get some work done. I don't do anything heavy on it. I do all the heavy lifting on my desktops at home. And then, like I said, if you're going to step into video game development like Unreal Engine or you play games yourself, you do video editing or you're going to do massive AI data crunching then you're going to step into a premium machine and those are gonna run you anywhere from 1500 and I've seen people spend $4,000 on a top of the line. All the components are the best of the best kind of desktop. But regardless, if you take the time to really think about what you're going to do with your computer and what your budget is, you're going to be a much happier coder.